a global crisis. And I guess fact-checking and you know, the battling misinformation was uh, never more important than it's today. Now it's actually, fact-checking process, uh, it can actually save lives. It's kind of never happened before. Uh, so I'm not a health expert, so I can't talk to you about the nature of the new coronavirus or when or if we can go back to our normal life. I'm actually here to talk with you, uh, not about the coronavirus pandemic, but the coronavirus infodemic. Uh, what we are living in right now is like a pandemic and also an infodemic, unfortunately. And, you know, I'm sure you all see many claims and some silly graphics, videos and social media whispers about the coronavirus situation. Many of them uh, seem like some sort of innocent jokes going on, uh, but there are some also, there are some uh, that can be quite dangerous. Uh, this kind of posts and claims seem quite silly for most of us here, but many out there who has very little media literacy, it's quite dangerous actually. So innocent looking or not, every kind of misinformation regarding the coronavirus must be dealt with. When you do fact checking, almost every content that you create is political. Actually, it started with only you know, checking the political figures' statements, uh, especially in the USA, uh, with using publicly open data to see if the you know, uh, politicians telling the truth or not. When you do only political fact checking, when you only checking the statements of the politicians, it's kind of reactive. First, you have to you know, wait for politicians to talk, and then it's not enough that they talk, but they have to talk in a way that you can work on it, actually. It's also fine. We find the facts, up-to-date facts, and without commenting, we make the whole situation you know, visible to everybody uh, for the whole society. This is uh, usually how fact-checking platforms start to get active with these kind of um, informative articles. We also introduced promise tracking, where we can uh, check the promises of the national governments, uh, the checkable ones, let's say. Uh, so most of the fact-checking platforms also do this kind of content. And it's actually quite popular because you can uh, you don't have to do it for the national government. You can do it for your president, or you can even do it with your uh, you know, local politicians. It became so popular in a very short amount of time, actually, especially right before the uh, election times. So we have first the classic fact-checking. The second content is like the informative articles, and then the promise tracking as like different kinds of contents. So was it enough? Of course, no. Finally, most of the fact-checking platforms started to do verification. Verification is like where you um, mostly check the digital contents spread around the internet, like you name it, images, videos, um, social media posts that you see every day. Uh, even coming from your relatives or very close friends. So in a global crisis like this, how these social media platforms deal with the infodemic? Um, there are some measures like steps that Twitter took regarding the crisis. They're now removing the false contents about the coronavirus and they actually do it faster than the normal removals. Uh, Twitter has its own fact checkers. YouTube also um, gives the first place to the official health related accounts in every country, like the health ministries. And, but with the almost 2 billion users, what about Facebook? They don't allow paid content uh, who has false information on COVID-19. And when a content related to the virus is false, they are now actually removing the content uh, from the Facebook. Uh, Facebook usually doesn't remove a false content when it's you know, fact-checked and confirmed not true, but they usually reduce the engagement of the content or the page that the content in it. 
So, uh, but now uh, they are removing the whole content uh, outside of Facebook and because uh, when it's, uh, you know, has some false claims about the virus situation. So who fact checked the contents on Facebook? They're not working like Twitter. They don't hire fact checkers in the Facebook. They're actually partnering with, they're working with the fact checking organizations around the world. Uh, so we do fact check the contents in Facebook. For the last two and a half years, uh, Facebook is partnering with the IFCN and the signatory fact checking organizations to have their services, to hire their services, let's say. Facebook gives the fact checking organizations a package of contents like every month and organizations check them one by one and create articles about the findings. Fact checkers fight against the infodemic wherever they can. And yes, even on Facebook, actually, uh, since the beginning of the March, more than 80% of the contents that the fact checkers check on Facebook was related to COVID-19 situation. What to do against like this pandemic and the infodemic? Uh, well, we have some like very basic but effective measures against the pandemic, right? I mean, all of us know that. Uh, like we are trying to implement the famous social distancing measures and like we are wearing masks and gloves when we are outside. We try to be in our houses as much as we can. So can we also have some very basic measures against the infodemic as well? I mean, definitely we can. Uh, for example, we can follow the health accounts like such as who CDS or local health authorities like the ministries in our social media accounts. Or um, we can follow like new scientific articles about COVID-19 if we have the capability of reading them, of course. Or like we can follow fact-checking organizations uh, in our countries. But I guess uh, apart from them, the most basic and also the most important one is we can avoid sharing the contents that are not verified so far. We don't go to the you know, crowded places without our masks in these days, right? I mean, it's like a suicide mission. So the mask reduces the spread of the pandemic and verification and fact-checking reduces the spread of the infodemic actually. And I'm sure you can be a part of it, uh, like even individually. Some, as you know, some people say, uh, I share it just in case, you know? Now we can put like a new motto, I don't share it just in case. So when you see a content that doesn't seem right to you, just don't share it. I mean, just wait a little bit. Uh, no one, you know, will, uh, will be killed because you don't share it. Uh, just wait, don't share it, or better, share with us, share with your like local fact-checking organizations. You can have an active role in this battle against the misinformation by just not sharing it. But also, you can have like a very uh, active role by joining the efforts of your fact-checking, of your like local fact-checking organizations. Uh, most of us have like volunteer programs that you can join. I guess this pandemic is so unique that maybe for the first time globally, we don't know what will happen like a month later. So right now, unfortunately, we don't have like a solid uh, like ground for the truth. That solid ground of truth is what we need right now. And what's, it's kind of what we crave for right now. It seems to me like it's the right time to help the fact-checking organizations around the world, especially your local ones that you trust, that you follow already. So uh, I guess um, for now, that's it from me. And thank you for listening to me. Mm -hmm.